The Boeing X-37, also known as the Orbital Test Vehicle OTV, is a reusable uncrewed spacecraft. It is boosted into space by a launch vehicle, then re-enters Earth's atmosphere and lands as a spaceplane. The X-37 is operated by the United States Air Force for orbital spaceflight missions intended to demonstrate reusable space technologies. It is a 120% scaled derivative of the earlier Boeing X-40. The X-37 began as a NASA project in 1999, before being transferred to the U.S. Department of Defense in 2004. Its first flight was during a drop test in 2006. There have been five X-37 orbital missions. The spaceplane's first mission, USA-212, was launched in April 2010 and returned to Earth in December 2010. A second X-37 was launched on mission USA-226 in March 2011 and returned in June 2012. The third mission was USA-240, which launched in December 2012 and landed in October 2014. The fourth mission, USA-261, launched in May 2015 and landed in May 2017. The fifth and latest X-37 mission, USA-277, launched on 7 September 2017. Topic. Development Topic. Origins In 1999, NASA selected Boeing Integrated Defense Systems to design and develop an orbital vehicle, built by the California branch of Boeing's Phantom Works. Over a four-year period, a total of $192 million was spent on the project, with NASA contributing $109 million, the U.S. Air Force $16 million, and Boeing $67 million. In late 2002, a new $301 million contract was awarded to Boeing as part of NASA's Space Launch Initiative framework. The X-37's aerodynamic design was derived from the larger Space Shuttle Orbiter, hence the X-37 has a similar lift-to-drag ratio, and a lower cross range at higher altitudes and Mach numbers compared to DARPA's hypersonic technology vehicle. An early requirement for the spacecraft called for a total mission delta V of 7,000 miles per hour, 3.1 kilometers per second, for orbital maneuvers. An early goal for the program was for the X-37 to rendezvous with satellites and perform repairs. The X-37 was originally designed to be carried into orbit in the Space Shuttle's cargo bay, but underwent redesign for launch on a Delta IV or comparable rocket after it was determined that a shuttle flight would be uneconomical. The X-37 was transferred from NASA to the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency DARPA, on 13 September 2004. Thereafter, the program became a classified project. DARPA promoted the X-37 as part of the independent space policy that the United States Department of Defense has pursued since the 1986 Challenger disaster. Topic. Glide testing The vehicle that was used as an atmospheric drop test glider had no propulsion system. Instead of an operational vehicle's payload bay doors, it had an enclosed and reinforced upper fuselage structure to allow it to be mated with a mothership. 
In September 2004, DARPA announced that for its initial atmospheric drop tests the X-37 would be launched from the scaled composites White Knight, a high-altitude research aircraft. On 21 June 2005, the X-37A completed a captive carry flight underneath the White Knight from Mojave Spaceport in Mojave, California. Through the second half of 2005, the X-37A underwent structural upgrades, including the reinforcement of its nose wheel supports. Further captive carry flight tests and the first drop test were initially expected to occur in mid-February 2006. The X-37's public debut was scheduled for its first free flight on 10 March 2006, but was cancelled due to an Arctic storm. The next flight attempt, on 15 March 2006, was cancelled due to high winds. On 24 March 2006, the X 37 flew again, but a datalink failure prevented a free flight, and the vehicle returned to the ground still attached to its White Knight carrier aircraft. On 7 April 2006, the X 37 made its first free glide flight. During landing, the vehicle overran the runway and sustained minor damage. Following the vehicle's extended downtime for repairs, the program moved from Mojave to Air Force Plant 42 KPMD in Palmdale, California for the remainder of the flight test program. White Knight continued to be based at Mojave, though it was ferried to Plant 42 when test flights were scheduled. Five additional flights were performed, two of which resulted in X-37 releases with successful landings. These two free flights occurred on 18 August 2006 and 26 September 2006. Topic. X-37B Orbital Test Vehicle On 17 November 2006, the U.S. Air Force announced that it would develop its own variant from NASA's X-37A. The Air Force version was designated the X-37B Orbital Test Vehicle OTV. The OTV program was built on earlier industry and government efforts by DARPA, NASA, and the Air Force under the leadership of the U.S. Air Force Rapid Capabilities Office in partnership with NASA and the Air Force Research Laboratory. Boeing was the prime contractor for the OTV program. The X-37B was designed to remain in orbit for up to 270 days at a time. The Secretary of the Air Force stated that the OTV program would focus on risk reduction, experimentation, and operational concept development for reusable space vehicle technologies, in support of long-term developmental space objectives. The X-37B was originally scheduled for launch in the payload bay of the Space Shuttle, but following the 2003 Columbia disaster, it was transferred to a Delta II 7920. The X-37B was subsequently transferred to a shrouded configuration on the Atlas V rocket, following concerns over the unshrouded spacecraft's aerodynamic properties during launch. Following their missions, X-37B spacecraft primarily land on a runway at Vandenberg Air Force Base, California, with Edwards Air Force Base as a secondary site. In 2010, manufacturing work began on the second X-37B, OTV-2, which conducted its maiden launch in March 2011. On 8 October 2014, NASA confirmed that X-37B vehicles would be housed at Kennedy Space Center in Orbiter Processing Facilities OPF-1 and 2, hangars previously occupied by the Space Shuttle. 
Boeing had said the space planes would use OPF-1 in January 2014, and the Air Force had previously said it was considering consolidating X-37B operations, housed at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, nearer to their launch site at Cape Canaveral. NASA also stated that the program had completed tests to determine whether the X-37B, one-fourth the size of the Space Shuttle, could land on the former shuttle runways. NASA furthermore stated that renovations of the two hangars would be completed by the end of 2014. The main doors of OPF-1 were marked with the message, Home of the X-37B. By this point, most of the activities of the X-37B project are secret. The official U.S. Air Force statement is that the project is an experimental test program to demonstrate technologies for a reliable, reusable, unmanned space test platform for the U.S. Air Force. The primary objectives of the X-37B are twofold, reusable spacecraft technology, and operating experiments which can be returned to Earth. The Air Force states that this includes testing avionics, flight systems, guidance and navigation, thermal protection, insulation, propulsion, and re-entry systems. Topic. Speculation regarding purpose In May 2010, Tom Berghardt wrote for Space Daily that the X-37B could be used as a spy satellite or to deliver weapons from space. The Pentagon subsequently denied claims that the X-37B's test missions supported the development of space-based weapons. In January 2012, allegations were made that the X-37B was being used to spy on China's Tiangong-1 space station module. Former U.S. Air Force orbital analyst Brian Whedon later refuted this claim, emphasizing that the different orbits of the two spacecraft precluded any practical surveillance flybys. In October 2014, The Guardian reported the claims of security experts that the X 37B was being used to test reconnaissance and spy sensors, particularly how they hold up against radiation and other hazards of orbit." In November 2016, the International Business Times stated that the U.S. government was testing a version of the M-Drive electromagnetic microwave thruster on the fourth flight of the X-37B. In 2009, an M-Drive technology transfer contract with Boeing was undertaken via a State Department TAA and a UK export licence, approved by the UK Ministry of Defence. Boeing has since stated that it is no longer pursuing this area of research. The U.S. Air Force has stated that the X-37B is testing a Hall-effect thruster system for Aerojet Rocketdyne. Topic. Processing Processing for the X-37 is done inside Bays 1 and 2 of the Orbiter Processing Facility OPF at Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where the vehicle is loaded with its top-secret payload. The X-37 is then placed inside a fairing along with its stage adapter and loaded on a KAMAG transporter for delivery to the launch site, be it Cape Canaveral SLC-37, SLC-41, or Kennedy Space Center LC-39A. Landing is done at one of three sites across the country, the shuttle landing facility at Kennedy Space Center, Vandenberg Air Force Base, or Edward Air Force Base. To return to Kennedy Space Center, the X-37 is placed into a payload canister and loaded into a Boeing C-17 cargo plane. 
Once at Kennedy, the X-37 is unloaded and towed to the OPF, where it is prepared for its next flight, similar to the Space Shuttle. Topic. Design The X-37 orbital test vehicle is a reusable robotic spaceplane. It is an approximately 120% scale derivative of the Boeing X-40, measuring over 29 feet .8 meters in length, and features two angled tail fins. The X-37 launches atop an Atlas V version 501 or a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. The spaceplane is designed to operate in a speed range of up to Mach 25 on its re-entry. The technologies demonstrated in the X-37 include an improved thermal protection system, enhanced avionics, an autonomous guidance system and an advanced airframe. The spaceplane's thermal protection system is built upon previous generations of atmospheric re-entry spacecraft, incorporating silica ceramic tiles. The X-37's avionics suite was used by Boeing to develop its CST-100 crewed spacecraft. The development of the X-37 was to aid in the design and development of NASA's orbital space plane, designed to provide a crew rescue and crew transport capability to and from the International Space Station." According to a NASA fact sheet, the X-37 for NASA was to be powered by one Aerojet AR-2-3 engine using storable propellants, providing thrust of 6,600 pounds force kilonewtons. The human-rated AR-2-3 engine had been used on the dual-power NF-104A astronaut training vehicle and was given a new flight certification for use on the X-37 with hydrogen peroxide, JP-8 propellants. This was reportedly changed to a hypergolic nitrogen tetroxide, hydrazine propulsion system. The X 37 lands automatically upon returning from orbit and is the second reusable spacecraft to have such a capability, after the Soviet Buran shuttle. The X-37 is the smallest and lightest orbital spaceplane flown to date, it has a launch mass of around 11,000 pounds 5, kilograms and is approximately one quarter of the size of the Space Shuttle Orbiter. In 2013, Guinness World Records recognized the X-37 as the world's smallest orbital spaceplane. On the 13th of April 2015, the Space Foundation awarded the X-37 team with the 2015 Space Achievement Award for significantly advancing the state of the art for reusable spacecraft and on-orbit operations, with the design, development, test and orbital operation of the X-37B space flight vehicle over three missions totaling 1,367 days in space. Operational history As of May 2019, the two operational X-37Bs have completed four orbital missions and one of them has been in orbit since 7 September 2017, they have spent a combined 2,689 days in space. Topic OTV One OTV One, the first X three seven B, launched on its first mission, USA two hundred twelve, on an Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida, on the twenty second of April twenty ten at twenty three fifty two Coordinated Universal Time. The spacecraft was placed into low Earth orbit for testing. 
While the U.S. Air Force revealed few orbital details of the mission, amateur astronomers claimed to have identified the spacecraft in orbit and shared their findings. A worldwide network of amateur astronomers reported that, on the 22nd of May 2010, the spacecraft was in an inclination of 39.99 degrees, circling the Earth once every 90 minutes on an orbit 249 by 262 miles 401 by 422 kilometers. OTV-1 reputedly passed over the same given spot on Earth every four days, and operated at an altitude of 255 miles 410 kilometers, which is typical for military surveillance satellites. Such an orbit is also common among civilian LEO satellites, and the spaceplane's altitude was the same as that of the ISS and most other crewed spacecraft. The U.S. Air Force announced on 30 November 2010 that OTV-1 would return for a landing during the 3-6 December timeframe. As scheduled, OTV-1 de-orbited, re-entered Earth's atmosphere, and landed successfully at Vandenberg AFB on 3 December 2010, at 9.16 Time, conducting America's first autonomous orbital landing onto a runway. The first spacecraft to perform such a feat was the Soviet Buran shuttle in 1988. In all, OTV-1 spent 224 days and 9 hours in space. OTV-1 suffered a tire blowout during landing and sustained minor damage to its underside. <laughs> OTV-2 OTV-2, the second X-37B, launched on its inaugural mission, designated USA-226, aboard an Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral on 5 March 2011 at 22.46 UTC. The mission was classified and described by the U.S. military as an effort to test new space technologies. On 29 November 2011, the U.S. Air Force announced that it would extend the mission of USA-226 beyond the 270-day baseline design duration. In April 2012, General William L. Shelton of the Air Force Space Command declared the ongoing mission a "...spectacular success." On 30 May 2012, the Air Force stated that OTV-2 would complete its mission and land at Vandenberg AFB in June 2012. The spacecraft landed autonomously on 16 June 2012, having spent 468 days and 14 hours in space. OTV-3 OTV-3, the second mission for the first X-37B and the third X-37B mission overall, was originally scheduled to launch on 25 October 2012, but was postponed because of an engine issue with the Atlas V launch vehicle. The X-37B was successfully launched from Cape Canaveral on the 11th of December 2012 at 18:03 Coordinated Universal Time. The launch was designated USA-240. The OTV-3 mission ended with a landing at Vandenberg AFB on the 17th of October 2014 at 1624 Coordinated Universal Time, after a total time in orbit of 674 days and 22 hours. Topic <laughs> OTV-4. 
The Air Force launched a fourth X-37B mission, designated OTV-4 and codenamed AFSPC-5, aboard an Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station on 20 May 2015 at 15.05 Coordinated Universal Time. The launch was designated USA-261 and is the second flight of the second X-37B vehicle. The mission was to test Aerojet Rocketdyne's XR-5A Hall effect thruster in support of the Advanced Extremely High Frequency Communications Satellite Program, and conduct a NASA investigation for testing various materials in space for at least 200 days. The vehicle spent a record-breaking 717 days and 20 hours in orbit before landing at Kennedy Space Center's Shuttle Landing Facility on 7 May 2017 shortly before 12 o'clock Coordinated Universal Time. <laughs> OTV-5 The 5th X-37B mission was launched on 7 September 2017 at 1400 Coordinated Universal Time atop a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39A. The Falcon first stage returned to land at SpaceX's landing zone 1 at KSC and was returned to its processing facility before the arrival of Hurricane Irma. This launch was designated as USA-277, the spacecraft was inserted at a higher orbital inclination than previous missions to further expand the X-37B's orbital envelope. It later had its orbit modified. While the complete payload for OTV-5 is unknown, the Air Force announced that one experiment flying is the Advanced Structurally Embedded Thermal Spreader 2 ASETS-2, which measures the performance of an oscillating heat pipe. A number of small satellites also shared the ride. Topic. OTV-6. The 6th X-37B mission, OTV-6, is planned to fly on an Atlas V-501 rocket in December 2019. Variants X-37A The X-37A was the initial NASA version of the spacecraft, the X-37A Approach and Landing Test Vehicle ALTV, was used in drop glide tests in 2005 and 2006. <laughs> X-37B The X-37B is a modified version of the NASA X-37A, built for the U.S. Air Force. Two were built and have been used for multiple orbital missions. <laughs> X-37C In 2011, Boeing announced plans for a scaled-up variant of the X-37B, referring to it as the X-37C. The X-37C spacecraft would be between 165% and 180% of the size of the X-37B, allowing it to transport up to six astronauts inside a pressurized compartment housed in the cargo bay. Its proposed launch vehicle is the Atlas V Evolved Expendable Launch Vehicle. In this role, Boeing's X-37C could potentially compete with the corporation's CST-100 Starliner commercial space capsule. Topic. Specifications 
Topic X-37B data from USAF, Boeing, Air and Space Magazine, and Fizorg, General Characteristics Crew, Nun Length, 29 feet 3 in 8.92 meters wingspan, 14 feet 11 in 4.55 meters height, 9 feet 6 in 2.90 meters max takeoff weight, 11,000 pounds 4,990 kilograms electrical power, gallium arsenide solar cells with lithium-ion batteries payload bay, 7 times 4 feet 2.1 times 1. 2 meters performance orbital speed 28044 kilometers per hour 17426 miles per hour orbit low earth orbit orbital time 270 days design topic see also Boeing X-20 Dinosaur, the U.S. Air Force's previous spaceplane, which was cancelled in the 1960s DARPA Falcon Project, a hypersonic missile delivery and satellite launch project Orbital Sciences X-34, a proposed unmanned suborbital reusable rocket technology testbed Saturn Shuttle, a proposed Space Shuttle launch configuration related development. Boeing X 40, a subsonic test glider, direct predecessor to the X 37 Bearcraft of comparable role, configuration, and era. Avatar, spacecraft, an Indian design intended for horizontal takeoff. Dream Chaser, a crewed spaceplane being developed by Sierra Nevada Corporation. Hope X, a similar sized vehicle of comparable role by JAXA cancelled. Hyflex, a Japanese lifting body spaceplane in 1996, precursor to Hope X. Intermediate Experimental Vehicle IXV, an ESA-designed experimental re-entry vehicle. Shenlong Spacecraft, a Chinese design, first tested in 2011 suborbital flight. Skylon Spacecraft, a British reusable unmanned spaceplane in development. Space Rider, a planned robotic spaceplane follow-up to IXV by ESA. Notes <laughs> 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 <laughs>